Good morning guys and welcome back to the shop. My name is Jason. This is Old Car Auto Guy. Stay tuned. All right guys, so it is Saturday and I am headed to the post office both right here in St. Stephen and over in Callis. Why? Because we've got some stickers to mail out to some followers. So let's head down to the post office in St. Stephen and then head over to Callis and hit the same thing over there. Thank you. Have Well, despite the fact that that wind would actually literally, literally blow you away today, well, the sun is out now compared to what it was doing a few minutes ago, and we've got our eight letters or stickers mailed out, and I will put a link in the description box below for each of those people who I sent stickers to so that you can go check out their channels and I will list their names right here so that you guys can see who it is and if you're not already subscribed head over there and do so. So today we're just going to be talking about a few of the things that are going on here in the shop and you guys have seen the 2010 Mazda Tribute which is behind me it was sitting outside for the last week and a half or two because we had to order parts for it. Generally speaking, that's not a good sign. I'm not sure if I mentioned before in previous videos, but on this vehicle here, we are doing valves. Back in the spring, the customer that had owned this had a problem with it misfiring on cylinder number two. So when we finally got down, we did a leak down test on that cylinder and found that a valve was either stuck open or bent. And sure enough, that's what the problem was. We fixed it for the customer and now he came back again a few weeks ago with the same problem. So this time it's on a different cylinder. We're going to tear the head off one more time and we are going to replace every single valve on the head. And we're not cheaping out. This time we went with all Ford products. Uh, the intake valves were about eight bucks a piece. The exhaust valves were about 22. We've also got the gasket kit, which includes all the gaskets for the top end. And that is what's going to put this thing back in running order. Now, granted, when you do these things, you've got to take the timing chain off and everything has to be reset all over again. But we're not taking any chances this time. All those parts cost us about 350 bucks right from the dealer, which I thought was a pretty good deal. And it's going to cost us some time. But when this thing is back together, it will be almost like a brand new vehicle. Now, this uh, Mazda Tribute has about 200,000 kilometers on it, which is not bad for a 2010. It's pretty close to what it should have on it for that year. And as you can tell, this thing is in really good shape. It's got the aluminum wheels. It is a four cylinder with the all wheel drive and Junior has got it all cleaned out, ready to roll. Now over here on this side, you can see we've got the uh, 2012 Kia Rondo, uh, which is just about ready for the lot. It just needs a bath and uh, Junior has been working away at this. This thing was pretty dirty on the inside, but it was clean dirt. A lot of, uh, you know, gravel and kid stuff. And uh, he ended up having to shampoo it, so you see we get the blower in the window. So the other thing I wanted to mention is that Dad has started working on the 36 Dodge project again. This time, he's not working up front, he's working in the rear. So one of the things that uh, we noticed when, when Dad bought this car, when he first initially started driving it, is that the rear end had quite a howl in it. So we knew that at some point during the game we were going to have to tear the rear end apart and that's one of the things about these front loaders is that they are fairly easy uh, to get everything apart and get it on the bench and work on. Now one of the reasons why we're doing this is A we wanted to find out what gear ratio it was and B we wanted to find out where the howl was coming from. So we're suspecting the howl is coming from the actual gears themselves 
and here's why. So I hope you can see that on camera, but there's a lot of pitting going on inside those teeth and a very, very little amount on the backside. So chances are, Dad is going to be seeing if he can find probably a new ring gear and pinion, and I'm not sure what he's gonna do with the gear ratio. When we looked at this, it's got the stamping right on the side of the ring gear that says that it's a 323. And he says that, you know, with the current power that this car has, it doesn't feel like a 323. So maybe it's because of the weight of the car, I don't know. But he might change that up a little bit to something a little bit better, like maybe a 355. I don't know what Dodge makes in these, uh, in these sure grip rear ends, but uh, I think he's gonna take a look and see what's out there and get things ordered and, uh, and put back together. And he's got this thing all jacked up. Maybe that's a new look for this thing. What do you guys think? Should we jack the rear end of this car up? Give her a good rake? Let me know in the comment section below. So as you can see guys, I do have some of my license plates laid out here. And I'm just going through to see what I have and what I don't have. Obviously I have lots of New Brunswick because that's where I'm from. And as a car dealer, we're generally taking plates off of cars all the time. So if you guys have any extra or any spare license plates that you're not using or just laying around collecting dust, I'd appreciate it if you could send them to me. I'm doing a man cave project in my garage at home and we're gonna be basically wallpapering a wall in the garage with license plates, so I need lots of them. You guys can be a part of that by sending me your spare license plates. My Canadian and my American address is in the description box below if you guys have anything that you would like to send me please send them those addresses. When I get them, I'll do a mail call and I'll give you a shout out and make sure that your plate gets your name on it so that we know who it's from. And as always guys, t-shirts and hoodies are for sale in the first link in the description box below at bonfire.com. You can get many colors, many styles, many sizes, and the prices aren't too bad. That is just one way that you can help support this channel. The other way is by giving this video a big thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button down in the corner and bell notification. That way, every time I upload a new video, you get notified and you can go tune in and see what's new with Old Car Auto Guy. Thursday evenings are the live stream event that happens every week uh, at uh, nine o'clock Atlantic time and we alternate channels on who hosts it. Last week it was on my channel, this week it's gonna be on Grant's channel at Straight Six Fan and I'll put a link up here in the cards so you can go there and subscribe to his channel and that way you can get notified as well when the live stream starts. So we sit there, we talk about cars, we talk about uh, automotive news, we give channel updates and we also will talk a little bit about some of the tips, tricks and struggles that we're finding with being YouTube creators and maybe there's something there that within the panel of guests that show up we can determine you know how to overcome some of these hurdles or we can help somebody else. The whole point of the subscriber hangout is so that we can help you gain subscribers just like you're helping us do the same thing. So guys, as I always end every video, I want to tell you to stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you guys. God bless. We'll see you in the next video. I know this is hopeless, moving in slow motion, trying to control my thoughts, but I can't stop my thought. This is a no-go. I just